والعياذ بالله ويغفر ما دون ذلك he will forgive everything else other than polytheism لمن يشاء whomever he likes yes ومن يشرك بالله and whomever worship any gods beside Allah indeed has has misled himself and he went astray a far far away from the right path my brothers and sisters in Islam the ultimate goal of the shaitan is to make you fall into polytheism is to make you fall into shirk is to make you perform acts of shirk and kufr so he can make you fall into jahannam and on the day of the on the day of, on the day of judgment he'll disown you and free himself from you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان كفر. The example of the shaitan when he told mankind disbelief. فلما كفر when he has disbelieved قال إني بريء منك. I free myself and this and I disown you. إني أخاف الله رب العالمين. Indeed, I fear Allah, the Lord of mankind and jinn and all that exist. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Islam. The shaitan ultimately wants to put you in Jahannam with him. And once you are in Jahannam with him, he'll free himself from you. As well, Iyadu Billah. As well, Iyadu Billah. When you, uh, 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 when you perform, when a person performs kufrs, the shaitan is happy. And he retract and he would leave you. Khalas. You fell into kufr. And he goes work on the believers. Now, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and other ulama, Ibn Jarin and others, in their tafsirs, they mentioned this story. The story of a monk. That monk, he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a temple, in a secluded place away from everyone. For 60 years, he would, he would, he would pray and pray and pray and spend so much time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one day, three brothers or four brothers that had one sister she was possessed and this man this man he had a good name amongst the people and he was able to cure people from possessions from possession and other sicknesses they took this man they took their sister to him and they left her with him of course in the beginning he rejected he said no don't leave her here. They said, well, we cannot come and, come and go all the time. Leave her here and we will come back after a few weeks, after a few months. We will take her when she's ready. That monk, he put her in a, separ in a separate room, in a separate place, away from him. And he would read on her. And he will take her food. And one day, the shaitan possessed her and made her take off all her clothes. This monk, he saw her without a clothes, and he ran away. He ran away. But the shaitan came to him, and he started to play in his head. Why don't you go and see her? Why don't you go and sit with her? Just have a chat with her. Just talk to her. Have some time, innocent time with her. Yes, we are not doing anything haram. So, al-iyadhu billah, he comes from doors he never expected. Then he came back and spoken to her, and sat with her, and did a ruqya on her, and slowly, slowly, he made her, he slept with her, wal'iyadhu billah, he committed fornication, he committed adultery with her, he committed zina with her, and then he left her. She got pregnant, and her stomach started to show. The shaitan came to him, in a former man, and he said, you want to have a break from her, you want this to stop? then kill her and kill the baby. Otherwise, if the people find out about you, they're going to come back and they will ruin your name and they will ruin your reputation and then you'll become from amongst the losers. Then this man, he did exactly that. He killed her and he buried her. Then the shaitan went to her brothers and look how his shaitan is busy to destroy the life of this person, to take him from the worship of Allah to Jahannam. And he was not happy 
just he made him fall into a major sin. He was not happy he made him fall into killing an innocent woman. No, he wants him to become a kafir. Because that is the, his ultimate goal, is to make him a kafir. After 60 years of worshipping Allah, the shaitan never gave up. And he still came to attack him. He took her. He, he went to her brothers and he came to them in their dreams. And he told them, go see your sister, she's been killed. She's been killed. She's been murdered. Then the brothers went to the monk and said, where is my sister? He said, well, she was possessed and she ran away. He lied to them. Lying, killing, adultery, all of them, one major sin after the other. And the shaitan wants him to perform the ultimate unforgiven, unforgivable sin, which is shirk wal billah. He took her. They said to him, where is our sister? He said, she was possessed and left. Then these people left and said, look, you know, we don't have that in him. He's a good, righteous man. Then the shaitan came to them again, each one of them in all their, in, in their dreams. Then they said, no, khalas, we need to go and see. The shaitan said to them, go check this spot and you will find the body. They dug for the body and they found the body. And then they come back and grabbed this monk and took him, wal'iyadhu billah, to the king. And they said, this is what this man done. Then the shaitan came to this monk. And he said to the monk, you want a way out? You want me to take you out of your trouble? He said, yes. He said, I am the one who made you fall into the adultery. I am the one who made you lie. I am the one who made you kill these innocent souls. And I can take you out in under one condition. He said, what it is? He said, prostrate to me, one prostration, one sajda. One sajda, that's what I want from you. One sajda wal iyadhu billah. I want from you to do one sajda. And he did. And then he committed disbelief and kufr wal iyadhu billah. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, kamathali shaitan, as the example of the shaitan, idh qala lil insan ikfur, when he said to mankind, disbelieve, falamma kafar, and when he performed prostration to other than Allah and practiced kufr wal iyadhu billah, qala inni bari'un mink. Indeed, I am free of you. I disown you. I do not know you. I worship, I fear Allah, the Lord of the Alameen. And that is the trick of shaitan. He would come to you from one side to another, to another, to another, until you fall into shirk. And how many of this ummah do fall into shirk wal iyadu billah? From circumambulating around graves, from thinking that some, believing that some saints deserve to, deserve to be worshipped beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of this ummah they sacrifice to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of this ummah they take oath in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of this ummah wal iyadhu billah? They prostrate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they make sujood to graves and they and, 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 and they seek help and aid from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking they are going good. Billah. The second step, my brothers and sisters, is innovation. Now the shaitan cannot make you fall into kufr, but he wants you, he, he, he tries something lesser evil than kufr. At the same time, he cannot make you fall into major sins. You're a good, pract you're a good righteous, practicing Muslim. You're a good, righteous, practicing Muslim. You're not going to fall into shirk. And at, this, at the same time, you're not going to fall into major sin. You would know alcohol is haram, so the shaitan in no way is able to infiltrate you and convince you to drink alcohol, nor he can whisper in your ears. So what, what does he do? He comes to you from a different door. Innovation. Do a birthday for your mother. Do a birthday for your son. Do a mawlid. Twirl in zikr, in circle of zikrs. Try to twirl around, dance and jump like a, like a hooligan thinking you're doing something good for Allah's sake. And the ulama have said, the innovation is more beloved to the shaitan than major sin. Why? Because if someone is falling into major sins, he knows that he's doing haram, and he knows that one day he will repent. 
But if someone is falling into innovation, he thinks that he is getting closer to Allah through this innovation.